Um, yeah, that, you know, I, I mentioned that uh, hotels are a partly real estate, partly an operating business. Um, the real estate, it's obvious that you do have buildings and, and a physical plant and, and an impact on the built environment, but you don't have the benefit of kind of consistent lease income. Um, but you still need to spend the money on the big buildings and things, but you have a lot of volatility, as, as Manny mentioned. And so in a market, like even as good as Miami, Miami has been... Uh, one of the best lodging markets in the country for, I'd say, for 20 years. And I'd say for the last 10 years, probably clearly the best uh, market in the country. But still, this year, compared to last year, in luxury and lifestyle hotels, in this great market in the country, Miami, our revenues are down probably 15% compared to last year. Last year was a phenomenal year. 22 and 21, no one was traveling anywhere else. Anywhere else, you couldn't go to the Caribbean, you couldn't go to Europe. People from all over the country were coming to Miami, um, and so, so. But what does 10 to 15 percent decline in revenue do on your profitability? Because all real estate, you have to maintain the overhead, you have to maintain the building, you have to maintain the people to serve the building, and so lodging has um, real volatility because revenues can go up and down with pandemics, with recessions but your cost model generally stays pretty high. And so when 10 to 15% drop in revenue can be a 30 to 40% drop in profit. Now companies, you, know, you can manage that, you can have reserves, you can have capital, but then you have a case like the pandemic and the pandemic revenue didn't drop by 10 or 15%, it dropped by 80%. In Miami, not so much, but New York, we're very active in New York, Washington, Boston, um, LA, all of the, San Francisco, Seattle, those markets, they were down 80%. And so then you were losing money, we were losing money for 10, 12 months. Um, and, and so that makes it difficult, it, it makes it challenging. And that's what leads, uh, leads companies to sometimes look after kind of more permanent source of capital. And so we had gone into we were a private company in the 80s and 90s. We were a very small business. And then in the 2000s, we created a public platform. We continued to have some other private businesses, but generally we created this public platform to help us access capital that's a little bit more um, permanent and you can access it. You can, have disc you can continue to raise capital when you need to. Um, and so uh, we were able to get through the pandemic. It was an extremely difficult time, but with the benefits of, of having good lenders, having good access to capital in the public markets, we were able to get through that period. Um, but there are costs to being public. And um, public investors um, look at the world a little bit differently than real estate investors do. Because real estate, we know, creates great value over long periods of time. It can create value in a short period of time, but but in growing economies, it can create you know, significant value over a long period of time. And so at different times in the cycle, you find that the public markets aren't valuing that long-term benefit of real estate as much. And so we saw that opportunity and, um, and were able to find private buyers to value the business higher than the public value was. Um, and so we, we view whether you're using public capital, private equity capital, private credit, those are all kind of tools in your, um, in your um, capital markets kind of toolbox on how you're going to run your real estate business. Uh, we consider ourselves hotel players, hotel owners and operators, but we may be public, we may be private, depending on where capital is flowing um, in the most efficient way. 